Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Paris Liaison uh, meeting this evening. Uh, my name is Councillor Sean Stevenson-McGaw, and I'm Vice Chair of Bath and North East Somerset Council. Apologies that the Chair, Councillor O'Brien, is unable uh, to make it this evening. Uh, she had some family commitments that she was unable to get out of. So uh, we've got a packed agenda tonight with some presentations from officers and from Peace Land Parish Council. So hopefully you will all be of fine voice and have lots of questions uh, of each other and, and to those presenting uh, this evening. So I'd like to welcome you to the Parish Liaison Committee. May I remind you, uh, members, officers and presenters, to keep your background noise to a minimum and only to speak when at one person at a time and do not speak over others. Please mute your microphones when not speaking and then unmute when I invite you to speak. Please indicate if you would like to speak by using the chat facility in Zoom and by typing MIS, may I speak? And then I will call you to speak in turn. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the council's YouTube channel so that people can view it afterwards. Any PowerPoint presentations will give will be given given will be added to the minutes and will be available on the council website the agendas for parish liaison committee meetings are jointly set by bath and northeast somerset alca and the council and we have a number of speakers for this issue this evening in response to the requests you have made at previous meetings of this uh previous meetings uh, do feel free to make use of the chat facility to raise any points or questions and they will be monitored by officers throughout the meeting to, and to ensure that we don't miss anything so um i see some uh, colleagues are still coming in so um i will just pause are we waiting for many more to come in No, there's no one actually in the waiting room now, uh, but uh, the, the people are sort of, sort of coming in a little bit late, I think. No problems. OK, so we've done item one on the agenda. Item two on the agenda is apologies for absence. And obviously the chair has given her apologies. Uh, Mark, are there any other apologies that we need to note this evening? Um, I've just been made aware of a, a free chair, um, Councillor Bourne. Um, Jan Burge from West Hartree Parish Council and uh, Dawn Drury from Cainton Town Council. Brilliant. OK, thank you very much. Item three on the agenda is any urgent business agreed by the chair. Uh, and I have two items, one which is urgent and one is related to that because the cabinet member has to leave early this evening. So she will do item nine on the agenda now together with the urgent business. So Councillor Dina Romero, you're going to give us an update on Ukrainian refugees. Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you for allowing me to, to speak earlier on both, both items. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Dina Romero. I'm the Cabinet Member for Children, Young People, Communities and Culture. Uh, and so the two items I want to speak about for uh, under my, my remit. The first item is uh, around the Homes for Ukraine scheme. Um, as sh I'm sure many of you will be aware, the government announced this scheme um, last week and it went live last Friday. Under the scheme, sponsors can offer accommodation to named people who've been displaced uh, by the terrible impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. There's a monthly 350 pounds uh, to say thank you to sponsors and that's regardless of how many refugees they sponsor. Sorry, is there a problem? Okay, sorry, I thought there was. Um, so this uh, scheme obviously presents uh, challenges if the sponsors don't have uh, relevant contacts with Ukrainian people um, and there is going to be some information which I think will be put into the chat for those wishing to sponsor but needing help to make those connections with those in need. Um, that information is being provided by Bath Welcomes Refugees. Um, so I'm hoping uh, Sarah will be able to pop that into the chat. And obviously that, that information will be circulated with the notes from this meeting too. So once there is a match, this will be followed by a visa application process and some additional checks, um, particularly around safeguarding etc. And then subject to these checks, the displaced people can travel to the UK and take up the accommodation 
they will have rights to work and benefits. So if you're interested in this scheme or want some more information, then you'll need to look at the government's website, uh, which is homesforukraine.campaign.gov.uk. The scheme is still open. So locally, we're expecting to welcome our first guests under this scheme quite shortly. Uh, and there'll be um, those that have come through the Ukraine Family Visa Scheme, which I think was an earlier um, uh, announcement from, from government where you could uh, invite uh, people that were part of your own family to, to your home. And I think there were slightly different criteria uh, with, with that too. As I said, uh, we don't know exactly how many people will be able to come in under this scheme, but just to sort of put this into context, we welcomed 74 people under the Syrian Refugee Resettlement Programme, uh, and that was part of a national figure of about 20,000 people. So we expect there will be a larger figure for Ukraine. I think um, across uh, Baines, there has been 100 people who've been matched to host them to, to proper properties. And there's also uh, expected to be a, a phase two of the scheme where organizations, not just individuals, will be able to act as sponsors, but obviously, uh, as I'm sure you can appreciate, this is quite a fast moving um, you know, scheme, it's developing. And so we uh, will give you that information as and when it, it comes up. So as I said uh, before, or alluded to at least, we're working with Bath Workers Refugees and also Julian House and local public services to make sure that we have sufficient school places and health and other support will be available as these new arrivals settle into our communities. So we're also contacting all schools as well to keep them updated. And then finally, no, almost finally actually, obviously I'd like to say a thank you to everyone who offered accommodation. I, I see um, locally, I think there's been some significant um, offers from places like uh, such as Canesham. So, you know, if you are aware of uh, people who have offered accommodation through this scheme, then please will you also extend my thanks to them as well. Um, if you uh, are aware of um, anybody else who would like to help or to support, uh, and isn't in a position to offer either a, a room or their home, then would you ask them to uh, consider contributing to the Disasters Emergency Committee Appeal, UNICEF or the British Red Cross? And uh, there's more information on all of those organisations uh, on the Council's own dedicated Support Ukraine webpage. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Romero. I believe you were also going to speak briefly, because I can't see any MIS in the chat, on the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Absolutely, yes. So um, I hope everybody in this room is aware that the, the Queen is celebrating quite a significant uh, jubilee this year. So it's her Platinum Jubilee. And there is, um, obviously, the whole year is dedicated to, you know, with a, a variety of different celebrations across Bath and North East Somerset and other places in the, in the country as well. Um, but we will also be focusing on uh, the weekend of the 2nd to the 5th of June. Um, so that is the extended bank holiday weekend. Um, and there's going to be a variety of different um, activities, including big jubilee picnics in parks, bandstand concerts, illuminated buildings, and all the other uh, activities that I think you would expect the council to be active in and promoting. You may have also seen that there's uh, um, the Queen's Green Canopy um, is being um, sort of carried out, uh, trees are being planted uh, in uh, and at a number of our uh, schools. I think there's something like 56 schools that are taking part in that um, and we uh, there is a toolkit uh, available for um, other activities to make sure you, you're sort of covering all the things that you ought to be um, and that's available on the council's website as is uh, a link to the webinar that was held in February as well that should give you some pointers too. But just one thing I wanted to stress if you are thinking about holding a street party 
um, on the historic weekend, as I said, between the 2nd or the 5th of, of June, um, then we will need to make sure that we have your application for any uh, required road closures by April the 22nd. So that was the, the main bit that I wanted to stress. Make sure you get your applications in early. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Romero. Um, hopefully many of our communities will be taking that opportunity to celebrate Her Majesty's uh, Platinum Jubilee. It's going to be a great weekend. Um, so we'll move back to the original agenda now because I don't see anyone with May I Speak uh, in the chat. So item four on the agenda is the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 13th of October 2021. Can I have a mover and seconder that they are an accurate record of that meeting please? I wasn't there, so I don't know whether they are accurate in the reflection of the meeting. I'm not seeing anyone saying that they aren't, so I will take that therefore that they are an accurate record of the meeting and they have been approved for the public record. Thank you very much. Item five on the agenda is uh, the West of England Combined Authority, Role, Function and Community Engagement. And we have one of our Bath and North East Somerset officers with us this evening, David Trithui, who will talk through a presentation and there will be an opportunity uh, for those here present to have some Q&A after the presentation. So over to you, David. Thank you, Chair. Um, is somebody going to magic the presentation? Thank you. So, um, as, um, as the chair mentioned at the beginning, uh, the agenda for this is, is planned jointly um, with the ALCA representatives. And um, one of the issues that was raised in the meeting was um, were issues about consultations um, around some of the uh, work coming out of the West of England Combined Authority. And clearly I'm not speaking tonight on behalf of the West of England Combined Authority, um, but what I did was able to agree was to, um, come along and uh, give a presentation around a little bit about how the combined authority functions and what, it, what its role is, which is as much to enable um, you as the parishes to kind of consider what, you know, what your concerns are and think about the best way of engaging with the West, Western Combined Authority. Um, I'm not going to be in a position to give you loads of detail around specific problems you've got, but I can certainly try and help and advise. So I'm just going to give um, a conscious, obviously, that different people on the call will also have different levels of experience and knowledge about WECA. Um, so I will kind of try and keep it um, fairly um, high level and run through it, but just to kind of give you a sense. And then as I said, um, you know, answer any questions I can and then, you know, think about what your concerns were and what, what you, you know, what you proposed you'd like them to do. So um, we move down. Thank you. Um, if you can move to the next one. Who's got, who's got control of the slides? Have I got control? No. Can we go to number two? Oh, oh we've, got, we've lost the slides all together now. Uh, I can see Sarah and Alison. I think Alison and Sarah. That's it. That's it. They're back. There you go. They're back there. So yeah. We've got they're up on the main screen. Yeah, we're done. We, okay, we've missed a couple. Um, yeah, so um, so yeah, so just just as a a, a bit of the uh, picture of the structure, really, you'll see at the top. I've I've uh, put joint committee and Weka committee. So um, th there is a, a a committee of Weka which is the deciding you know, whether decisions are made around the um, the functions of the combined authority. Um, but sitting alongside it and with similar membership but with the addition of um, North Somerset is a joint committee, um, which broadly deals with the less the, the local enterprise partnership issues and legacy issues that were in existence before WECA was created. Um, and that's made up of the, um, the leaders of the unitary authorities and the mayor as well. And it's often they've met together in the past, but as some of you know, there's been some discussions recently about um, how we can make the trans how the decision making that could be clearer because I think it got a little confused in various places. So, you know, we've got two committees um, dealing with the, the work that you will see across West of England. And those are supported by mayors and leaders, 
and the chief executives and some things have devolved the chief, chief executives to decide particularly around some of the funding allocations and schemes. And then there are four um, uh, advisory boards which are not decision making um, in any way and they have council and membership from the council's cabinet on them as, as well as members from you know the other unitary authorities. Um, and they will be discussing issues that before they go for the decision making. And, and I know that consultation and community engagement around the programmes and around the pro programmes that goes on is discussed at a lot of those meetings. And you know, we uh, certainly at officer level and member level, I know people have been um, you know encouraging uh, WACA to to um, you know fully consult and do that properly. So Alison, can you move down? Right, so that's just a uh, people. So just to show on the committee on the, and additionally on the um, uh, joint committee, we also have the chair of the West of England LEP. And the LEP is a, again, a legacy business grouping that was set up again before WECA was created. Um, and I know you had the mayor, Dan Norris, at your last meeting um, to discuss you know, what his kind of aims and issues were. And the next meeting of the WECA and joint committees is on the 8th of April. So if people want to get a have a view of that, that will be um, that will be on the um, Weka website. Those will be broadcast so you can see what how those are operating and things being discussed. Can you want to move down again then? Thank you. Just these are just the stated objectives. So I guess you know what's it all for? Well, it was a devolution deal, and devolution deals are kind of you know they they go in phases. Devolution from government, central government has rounds of doing devolution then seems to lose a bit of energy and enthusiasm. So these devolution deals like the Weka one was done at the same time as ones in uh, the Tees Valley, Peterborough, um, following on from Manchester and the West Midlands. And there's a whole series of devolution deals being discussed now on the back of the leveling up white paper. Uh, some of which are at county level, some of which are combined authority levels. Um, but the picture across the country is is quite is quite um, you know, dispersed and diverse. It's not there's not a there's not a, a single map of the country that will show you exactly what's happening. But the idea was that you you needed to work at a bigger level than the unitary authority to look at the key strategies around the economic um, you know uh, success of the area. So it's really trying to focus on the strategic issues, economy, spatial planning, kind of strategic transport. And to coordinate, coordinate the work we do, and by doing that, to get actual power and funding devolved from central government departments. So, in a sense, in the past, the council might have gone directly to a government department. Now we often go via via the West of England combined authority. And in doing so, the the aim is that you are able to attract more central government funding and devolution than you would have got as an individual authority. That's the basis of these deals. Um, and initially, when the, the West of England one was negotiated, you know, we were also able to negotiate a £900 million investment fund for the West of England over a 30 year period, which is um, underpinning a lot of the, uh, the work that's now going on. So, um, like I said, these slides will be circulated later, so I won't go through line by line, I'm conscious of time. Alison, can you move down? Just um, to set out, these are the kind of core ones that the WECA works on, and I won't go into all of them in detail tonight. Though I've got some slides on here that give you a bit more in information on skills and employment, um, but I guess you know most of what you're focusing on in the parish level often is around the transport and planning issues. So that there is detail in the slides which you'll see, but we'll talk primarily around the plan transport and planning. Um, if you can move down there. So, the West of England Combined Authority is a transport authority. So as far as the government's concerned, it's a transport authority for this area. The, the council, Baines Council, is effectively the highways authority. So we're responsible for, you know, the, the, the highway services and parking and all the things within Baines. Um, and that funding now, though, comes through WECA. Um, but what WECA is responsible for is that budget a key route network, so and also transport issues that cross boundaries, and producing a plan plan that looks at that strategic infrastructure. Looks at importantly for parishes as well, buses, 
So clearly there's a lot of discussion around, you know, where buses are now in terms of the uh, partnership, but also the current financial position, um, the key, uh, key route network, and then giving grants to the authorities like ourselves. Um, and then working at a strategic level with, um, you know, with people like um, National Highways, as they're now called, and Network Rail. So move on again. And the most kind of relevant to that thing that you, you may have seen most recently is the um, what's snappily called the City Region Sustainable Transport Settlement, um, or the CRTS, which is how the government is now portioning out the funding to the, to the um, uh, combined authority areas. So in the past, as I said, we would have had highways funding coming from government, and there'll be a series of you know, bid funds for us to go to government on. Um, those all now come through this settlement. And the West of England has been successful in, in making uh, proposals to central government around that settlement. Um, and I guess, you know, that's going to be the kind of key determinant of, a lot of where the funding for a lot of those key strategic issues comes from. And that's the work around the Bristol to Bath, Mass Transit, and there's a little picture there. Um, some of you may have had presentations on this at all. And if you, if you want to see, there's a presentation on the YouTube site from last Monday's um, Climate Emergency Scrutiny Panel on this with more detail uh, from the key officer and from uh, uh, Councillor Warren. So you, you can have a, a watch of that if you want. And then, you know, the route through the, um, uh, through the A36 and A367, which has been a kind of a, an ongoing kind of issue for us around, you know, how do we get access to the, uh, to the rest of the area. Some key issues around Bath City Centre, um, which I know many of you are familiar with, even if it's not a parished area for context of tonight. And if you want to move on again, Alison. And then the whole series of things around walking and cycling, um, which is driven by the government. The government is no longer um, keen to fund roads. So a lot of the pressure will be around um, alternatives. So what's the alternative to that? Um, and there's a whole series of community connections planned around those kind of main corridors. Plus there's something called the um, Local Cycling Walk in Infrastructure Plan, which is sometimes called the LC WIP, uh, which, is, which covers you know, some of the known schemes that we want to invest in. Can you move on again, please? Sir? And then planning in housing, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say a lot about this because I think um, a number of you will have attended a briefing given by um, Simone de Beer and Sophie Broadfield uh, a couple of weeks ago around the uh, spatial development strategy um, and the local plan that will come from that. But this, this so but clearly it's setting a spatial plan for the, the area. Um, we will have to have a local plan for Baines that you know, delivers uh, the key aspects of that, which has more of the detail, but also that fits with the local transport plan. So you know, one of the key issues is, can you get a local transport plan that's you know in line with what we want to do for the spatial development um, and that's the kind of key thing i think a lot of people would see um then move down again as i said there are some hidden slides for tonight's presentation which you'll get in the pack which cover some of the skills and employment stuff for you but i'm just conscious of time i want you to have time for your conversation but just to say there is also a an overview and scrutiny committee that covers this which is currently chaired by a Baines councillor, Councillor Dugoid. Um, and they do have, again, if you were wanting to have um, interactions with WECA, you know, you could engage with the scrutiny panel um, to, you know, for them to see if there's issues there they would want to look at in terms of reviewing the work of the combined authority and making recommendations to the, to the mayor and um, the committee for um, changes to be made. So, um, I'm just, um, yeah, so I, I, I'll stop there because I think I could go on forever about weapons, but I'm, I, I'm conscious you want to have a discussion. So. Okay, thank you very much, David, uh, for your presentation about the role and function of WECA and how it affects our parish and town councils uh, within Bath and North East Somerset. I actually personally uh, attended one of the WECA consultation uh, meetings recently back on the 10th of March about the, A3, the A367 and the A37 corridor improvements and there were a number of parish and town councillors there as well as ward members from Baines and I find that very useful myself. Um, our first person who would like to 
uh, speak, and I don't know whether uh, yet yeah, there's a question uh, from Councillor Heisel, but the first person to put may I speak is Lottie, who is the from Salford Parish Council. Lottie, could you introduce yourself and make sure I got who you are right? Yes, thank you. I'm Lottie Smith Collins. I'm the clerk at Salford Parish Council. It was Salford Parish Council who um, raised an issue to Baines Alka's awareness regarding. Uh, well, community engagement with Weka, which I saw was on the agenda, but doesn't seem to have been covered during uh, that presentation, at least not as um, specifically as, you know, I'd like. So if I could um, ask a question regarding that, the presentation under core strategic function stated that Weka provides a formal and accountable forum for decision making relating to all relevant Weka functions. And uh, the question that I'd like to, well, ask um, is why is it that Weka does not respond to the parishes when asked about matters? Um, specifically, the parish council hasn't been consulted on key uh, bus transport consultations. Um, we haven't been emailed them. When we've become aware of them, we haven't uh, had the time to respond due to the period of time agendas take, etc. within the consultation period and in asking for extensions um we've received no response uh we've approached weka about this um a couple of times the parish council has actually resolved that they're viewing their consultations as unlawful um in a letter written on the 17th of february written to and copied into at least eight uh weka addresses either individuals or their transport operations team to no response um so with regards to community engagement with the parishes, what's Wecker doing about this? Because we're not the only parish who's experiencing this. Well, as, as I said at the meeting at the beginning, you know, I've I've been invited to make a presentation. I'm not I'm not employed by Wecker, so I can't answer what Wecker have done. Um, what what uh, Councillor and, and Councillor Hansel raised in the um, you know, in the um, comments, you know, what what information do Wecker have? about the parishes and town councils and, and the answer is i don't know we can obviously check and, and follow up with them that they've got all the information they should have i guess a later item on this agenda is around the parish charter which reflects a lot of learning that baines council has had over the years around how to work better with parish and town councils and i guess setting aside the you know the 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 issue and any dispute you have with weka themselves which you know we will need resolving you know, there clearly seems to be an opportunity to kind of approach Wecker to have a similar discussion around how they treat the parish and town councils in their work, you know, because, you know, you've got a particular issue here, but I guess nobody wants those things to happen again. So, you know, we can support that and encourage that discussion. Well, it has so, been, sorry to interrupt, sorry. But it, you know, so on the agenda, it said Wecker role function and community engagement. So I kind of presume that there was going to be some uh, response because Baines has been made aware of this communication issue um, and that you know we we would appreciate Baines's support with facilitating a conversation about being consulted correct so, so um in terms of moving forward from that Lottie um you know I think it's and the officers have heard your view we have cabinet members here who sit on worker committees and can feed that back and hopefully we will get an answer back to you and other members of the Paris Liaison Committee uh, in, the, in a good time in the next couple of weeks. That would be um, great, we appreciate um, it, thank you. Obviously, like I said, uh, I don't know about the A4 corridor discussions that may have been going on, but certainly for the A367 and the A37, I'm looking at the attendance list and who was invited, all the parish councils on both of those two routes were invited to consultation about those so i don't know why it may have been different for the a4 one so there is an example of weka doing it properly and there were parish and town councils there and we will investigate how why they're not doing it properly uh, for all their consultations and all their engagement and we'll get an answer back to you in, in a good period of time thank you is that okay thank you uh, i have councillor duncan Heisel. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I just want to support what, what um, the parish clerk of Saltford uh, uh, has said, and um, uh, she's being very restrained, but uh, the owner should be on Wecker to, to make these um, uh, connections, and it's amazing that it hasn't happened, uh, almost disgraceful. Um, I, I, as for um, 
uh, communication, even with uh, ward councillors, uh, that's not great. Because just the A4, my experience was uh, there was a, uh, a, 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 a Zoom meeting, it got taken up by generalities. When it got down to detail, there was 10 minutes to, to look at uh, a spreadsheet that nobody could read, full of uh, options, none of which had been discussed either by ward councillors or by uh, parish or town councillors. Um, they were lists of options produced by consultants. Uh, one, of the, one, of, uh, one of them I spotted quickly was absolutely absurd. Um, so um, WECA needs to sharpen up its act and, um, uh, uh, and let the, they've been in uh, business long enough now, we need to get down to work communicating with the, the grassroots councillors and parish and town councils. Thank you. Thanks, Le. Hopefully the uh, representatives of parish and town councils through NALPA uh, and the Avon branch and the Bath and North East Somerset branch can approach WECA directly and obviously we will do our best as Bath and North East Somerset to uh, expedite better uh, consultation from uh, WECA going forward. But uh, it would be helpful if your representative organisations could do the same as well in terms of speaking to Dan Norris uh, and the team at WECA. Um, I don't see having anyone else uh, would like to speak on this item. So David, thank you very much for your presentation on the role and responsibility of WECA and we'll certainly take some actions forward to see if we can get some answers with regard to the consultation issues. Indeed, thank you, Kat. Thank you. Item seven on the agenda is, uh, sorry, item six on the agenda is the parish online and mapping climate related data and we have a presentation uh, in a second from Tristan Carey who is the chairman of the company behind this information but first uh, one of our officers Mark and Laker who is the team manager for the GIS team the geographical information uh, team uh, at Baines will start this introduction thank you. Uh, good evening everyone um, I hope most of you know what Paris Online is and um, are using it. I know many of you are. I don't want to say, I'm not going to say too much other than that if you're not using it or you are using it and need help, just get in contact with me. And I'm going to hand over to Tristram uh, to talk to you about this, uh, which arose originally out of the uh, Chew Valley Forum. Thank you. So over to you, Tristram. Okay, um, Alison, do you have the presentation, please? Thank you very much. Um, so we can go straight on to the next slide, please. Alison, next slide, please. Ooh. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. It's the same gremlin again. It's coming up on the main screen for us, but it's not actually coming out on the screen that we're sharing with you all oh should i use mine can i can i just say it says enable editing so it may not work until you click that uh, I, can't, I can't click it do you want me to share my screen because i've got my presentation on yeah, my screen i think that one might be a good idea Trish. yeah let's try thank that. you mm -hmm. Blimey. um um why can't i now see my own presentation can you all see that yes we can oh all right sorry precious time being lost <clears throat> okay thank you um so this this comes out of um a, a job we're trying to do to help parish online to be used for climate plans <clears throat> and and this come from we've got feedback from all over the country with parishes who are who've unable to respond find they can't really respond to the climate emergency of their districts so over 70 percent of districts have declared a climate emergency but the parish councils are finding it hard in general to follow up with geography specific climate plans that talk to their own parish areas and that's partly lack of expertise in the parishes it seems to be partly lack of data and but perhaps most of all lack of the tools so my proposal is that Baines should make a, you know, may, maybe quite a serious effort to use Parish Online for this task. And Baines is in a very good position, I think, to do this because you've all got Parish Online. So most of, most of the parishes are familiar with it. 
So moving quickly on, what the, the role of Parish Online that I see for climate plans is first of all, to provide standard data layers. So it, those are mostly already there, the master map, the address space, all the ancient woodlands, the, you know, there's about 400 layers of public data. We've also added now some climate specific data. <clears throat> so we've, we've embedded the EPC, the Energy Performance Certificate Database, and the Center for Sustainable Energy Impact Report in Parish Online, and we're intending to add more layers uh, when parishes tell us what layers they'd like. There are also some Bath and North East Somerset specific layers that I think Martin is going to uh, make available to us, which is EV charging points. You've, you've done some analysis on that, and the ha housing condition survey, and then again, there may be others. And then finally, we can provide access to commission data so that would be for things like solar potential and community ground source heat pumps which we could have surveyed for you through a partner and i'll talk about these in a bit more detail so don't don't take all this in now the second the, the perhaps the best thing about parish online is it allows parishes to build action plans so they would look a bit like neighborhood plans but they would have they would show people and they could be put up in the council website they would show layers for, for showing where the priority areas for energy are, for transport, biodiversity, all those different things. So as you create a plan, you can actually embed it in a map and have people look at it and, and understand it. So that's actually, that's, a, that's C, communicating those action plans via public maps. And then you can also use the maps to plot and report progress. <clears throat> and the other great thing about doing this across in Parish Online using standard templates would be that you can share layers as you build them between all the interested parties. So all the, all the parishes in Baines and actually across the country in principle could share the same national layers of information if we could agree some standards. The sort of layers I'm talking about that we could embed in Parish Online would be things like energy, the EPC scores, estimates of potential insulation priority priority areas, uh, solar priority areas, residential and community, and wind. And then for transport, it would be things like park and ride schemes, car sharing schemes, cycle networks, quiet lanes, and perhaps last mile delivery plans so that you, you have electric vehicles delivering in urban areas. And then there'd be a set of, of plans for trees and biodiversity, like tree planting, access to woodland, green corridors, and finally, sustainability, things like recycling, resource sharing, and minimizing waste. And as I say, once those layers are defined, we could add those layers to all the Baines Parish Online accounts. So everybody would have a template of, of what to do rather than every parish trying to reinvent the wheel. So in case you haven't seen these, if you go into your Parish Online account and uh, look at your own parish, you, you get this, uh, this Centre for Sustainable Energy Impact Report, and you can also down download a PDF report, which has more detail. So I don't know if that's useful, but it's there if you want it. Um, and that's, that's just a picture from the detailed PDF report showing how an individual parish compares in its footprint to Bath and North East Somerset as a whole and to the, the Great Britain average. So there's quite a lot of useful starting information in there. Um, we've added, I, I said to you that we've added the EPC scores. So if you go in on the left hand side of the screen to your climate and energy folder, you've got all the EPC certificates in there. And those show for every house that's got an EPC report, there are 21 million of those, the, the rating and also the potential for increasing the, the, the um, EPC score in a, in a financially sensible way. And that, that sort of blue uh, outline shows the houses that have got the potential to get to a C rating. And that's again, a government target is to raise as many houses as we can from below C to C. So this, this uh, slide shows which, which of those houses that, that applies to. The other ones, you can see the ones that don't have the blue halo, they, they cannot sensibly get to a C rating uh, without you know, spending too much money. So, that, so this, would, this sort of data could give you an idea of where you should prioritize uh, insulation and, uh, and um, double glazing. <clears throat> and this shows, this, oh sorry, this shows, so for any of those houses, so the, the house with the blue ring around it, you, we've got access now to the complete EPC um, database. So there's a lot of information there about the hot water, 
um, you know, whether it, whether it's energy efficient, the floor description, whether there's insulation. So there's a lot of information in there, which again could guide a parish to say, well, this is where we should be applying grants and trying to push for, for improvements. I talked about um, some more specialist work that we, we are now working with a company called Energeo, and they use um, a machine learning algorithms to create information that could be useful for you. So this is this is an automatic uh, analysis of the, the solar potential of each building, and that's related to the roof shape, the direction of the, of the slope of the roof, whether it's south or whether there's a good south facing slope. And so for every building, you've got a kilowatt uh, estimate of the solar potential, which could be useful. And then they combine that with looking again, using machine learning from a satellite image, they look at the individual houses and they can say where solar panels have already been fitted. And so the difference between adding, adding those two charts would show you where you've got the most potential to, to provide solar energy. And that could again be linked to a scheme if you worked with a contractor to say, you know, we can give discounts or or um, grants in these areas because this is where the most potential is. You know, that could help a council create a, a, a meaningful plan. Uh, this is just another example: EV charging points. And this again is done by Energy. Um, I'm afraid this has to be paid for the guide price on the slide. <laughs> the house is in red. Oh gosh, I'm saying my internet connection is unstable. I can hope you can hear me. In red are houses that don't have drives and the green houses do have drives so, so that uh, householders don't need a public charging point to, put, to charge their cars. So that immediately points the council to, to this red area and you need to say then how can you provide charging points? And they then identified a, a um, car park which is where my cursor is and they've put they've added a five minute walking um halo so this yellow halo is the houses that can get to that car park in five minutes and that would allow a householder here in this red area to drive to the car parking point put his car on charge and walk back home outside that yellow five minute to the car park then what the analysis does is looks at pavement widths and works out where the best place will be to put charging points on these somewhere on these streets so that they would be accessible to, to the rest of the houses. So that sort of analysis again could help the council make decisions about what, what to do for the best. Um, this is another one about the ground, ground source heat pump suitability, which I won't go into in any detail, but it's just again available, a data set that could be um, commissioned to help you. And, and then this is just an example. This is not a, a real example, but this is a, an actual neighborhood plan, but it's the sort of thing, the sort of way that I think Parish Online could implement or, or demonstrate a climate plan. So these, are, these polygon areas in red could be, for instance, they'd be different layers, but these could be the areas where you're offering grants for insulation of houses because there's a clear benefit to doing it there. The other areas could be tree planting uh, transport links, you know, whatever it is. So those would all be separate layers that could be seen by the public in your in your website. And I think that's next. That's all. So the next the next steps, in my view, are either Chu Valley or um, the other areas above and the northeast Somerset could work as a team to create these these layers. Um, the second question is, could we involve a university like Bath Spa or, or Bath to provide expertise and provide people to, to help implement all this? Um, and can we develop templates? And I'd be happy to help. We, we've got some feedback from all over the country. I would like to develop some template layers so that every parish wouldn't have to start from scratch and you know, invent the way to do it. But there would be a method. And as I say, we'd be happy to help as required. And I think that's all I need to say because I wanted to leave time for questions. Brilliant. Um, thank you very much, Fishna, for that very uh, informative and useful presentation on what we all can do to help combat the climate emergency. Uh, I have one person who wants to uh, speak uh, first, which I believe is Councillor Dave Wood. 
Thank you very much. And a, a great presentation and a great system there. A bit of a, a basic question from me. I always look on slightly enviously as uh, I see par my parish councils uh, using parish online. Um, I'm a, a Baines councillor, but not a parish councillor. Is there a way that we could have access to the system? I asked yes. the same question privately. <laughs> yes, indeed there is. And, and Martin's probably the best person to speak to that. But Martin has, has access at the, the Baines level to um, parish online, or it, actually we call it district online, but it's basically the same system. And as many councillors, anybody who wants to use the system can use it. And the other thing I'd like to say is that if there are other organisations, like, for instance, a climate planning forum or whatever it is, any related user who's working for the public good in a non-commercial way could join in. So in Suffolk, for instance, we've given free licenses to the Tree Warden Network and to the, the, the Suffolk um, Climate Change Network. So basically, because, because you, you in Baines have already invested in the system over many years, uh, I would like to encourage as many related organizations as possible to join in basically for nothing. Because, because the whole idea of this is we create a common framework where all this data can be shared properly between, between everybody involved. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have a, a two questions. We have, well, two hands up. Uh, Jonathan Alder and then Councillor Sarah Warren. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, you mentioned that it's being used by the Chew Valley Forum. Are you aware that there are other community forums within Baines? You've got the Soma Valley, you've got Bath Haven Forum, et cetera, and others. It would be really helpful to understand what you mean by working together. Um, well, I, I, that's really not for me to answer, but but thank you for that information. I, the only reason I know about True Valley is that I was invited to a True Valley Forum meeting to talk about this. And I gave basically the same presentation. But the whole of Bath and North East Somerset is licensed to use Parish Online. So really, it's, yes. it's, you know, it's, it's, say all those, the Summer Valley Forum, all those forums are welcome to use it. And I can certainly help and give some guidance, but really I can't. You know, I can't drive that. It's up to you to, to say, well, let's use Parish Online and let's ask for some help. OK, so what I'm hearing is, because I'm chair of the Bath Haven Forum, I should liaise with Jackie Head as regards what how the Chew Valley are, are using it and learn from them. That's the message. <laughs> <coughs> yes, that, that sounds right. Thank you. But, if you have any trouble, get, get back to me and I can help you some more. But Mar actually, Martin Laker is probably the guy you should contact first because he, he, he completely understands and is funding the system for all the parishes. Can, can I say thank you very much? Sorry. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Can, can I just can respond to John's um, comments? Because the reason we invited um, Tristram and Martin to come along was to Parish Liaison was that obviously Parish Online has been a system that's been used by parishes. They came to the Chew Valley to, to sort of highlight some of the work um, that potentially could be done because of the climate emergency and nature emergency working group. But we felt that it was a really good opportunity for all parishes to potentially work together um, so that the layers that are created could be shared across all the parishes. So we felt that this was the best forum to, to the next steps in terms of bringing uh, the presentation to this forum. So um, I think definitely we, we can bring it to all the, the connecting communities forums, but actually it's, it <coughs> potentially could be a, a wide cross, cross all parish um, project. And we could set up a little working group to look at supporting uh, Martin and Tristram about building the layers that will work for all the parishes. Yes, I, I fully understand that. Thank you. I think it's, I mean, I think it's a fantastic op opportunity and there's a lot of really good information that can be shared across the forum area. Um, the issue that we've got in Freshford is the degree of IT literacy that exists within the Parish Council to utilise Parish Online in this manner. And I'm sure the same issue is going to be had across all the other parishes within the Bath Avon Forum area. But by pulling together, we may be able to use it. I'm hoping that's the story that will come from Chew Valley. 
Um, that, that would be great. Thank you. It is quite, I think, I think there is a lot of support now in how to use it. And we can always run, you know, we can run a workshop for you to, to teach you. And I think, again, it, as um, Sarah said, I think if we all can club together, because we, we don't have these standard layers yet, but the expertise is, you know, with your sorts of groups. I think if we could get, I think the first step in my mind would be to have a, some sort of a committee that says, what data do we want to collect? And then we can set up the templates very easily to collect that data. And we can then show you how to use that and how to collect the data and how it all works. And it's, it's really, I don't think it's as difficult as maybe you think. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I won't go into the detail on what I know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I call Councillor Sarah Warren, who is the next person up to speak, uh, I know uh, uh, Martin has responded in uh, the chat to Councillor Eleanor Jackson. So Councillor Sarah Warren, I believe you wanted to speak on this topic. And just for, for my benefit, one of the questions in there in the presentation, or one of the parts of the presentation was about uh, electric car charging points. And I always thought there was issues with regard to the capacity of the local grid uh, provided by Western Power. So I don't know if, if in your responses uh, and your question, you could also address that point. Yeah. Um, yes, I mean, we're, we're in, a, so on that point, uh, we're in dialogue with Western Power Distribution, but there does seem to be um, limitations on the capacity of the grid. Um, uh, so that makes it hard to put in um, a lot of very rapid uh, charging units very quickly, but we are in discussion with them. Um, so what I was going to say about the um, uh, the presentation, thank you, Tristram, is that it looks really um, exciting. Uh, so I'm the cabinet lead for climate emergency, and it's a really exciting level of detail that you've got access to there. And I was a little bit confused to understand, um, is this something that all the parishes who are um, on the call, do they have access to this now, or or what do they have to do to get it? Is it? Um, uh, no, they've is, they've all got they've all got, got access. They've all got access if if they uh, um, if they want it because Martin sort of pays a group license for, for all the parishes in Baines, so they've they've all got access to it. Whether they use it or not is a different question. Okay, thank you. I believe it might be appropriate now that if I ask Jackie Head and Councillor Nick Baker from the True Valley Air Forum uh, and the Nature Emergency Working Group, just to give an update on their work and how these things may uh, link together. Yes, thank you. Thanks for inviting me to come this evening. I'm, I'm not a parish councillor, but I'm one of the steering group members of the True Valley Area Forum Climate and Nature Emergency Working Group. Um, and we've been working as a group for about 18 months now. Um, on a number of areas to try to reduce the carbon footprint of the Chew Valley. And really the, the group was formed underneath the forum um, in order to bring parishes together to think about bigger cross parish issues, because with some area, in some areas, it's actually quite difficult to think about decarbonisation without looking across a whole area. So um, our group has 12 parishes within um, signed up as you, if you like to our meetings um, so we haven't been using this mapping tool so far just to be clear about that we are not the experts in using this mapping tool we only learned about it at the last forum meeting um, but what I also presented at that meeting was that we have been doing mapping work um, I don't know if it's possible to share my screen and I could just show you an example of mapping work that we have done is that doable I'm sure the host will be able to give you permission. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you can tell I've been looking up the support Ukraine. Um, okay, so we did a piece of work where we were looking at potential areas for um, EV charging points within the region. Um, and we put we sent out um, an email questionnaire to, uh, you know, just a very brief um, questionnaire to parish clerks. Um, and basically what this map, it builds on in layers, but um, if I take out those two layers. These were the parishes that we um, spoke to. Um, the gray ones are the parishes that didn't respond to us at all. Um, the red ones responded and said they could not um, incorporate a, char a, a public charger within their area. The orange one said probably wouldn't want one for various reasons. 
Um, and the green, the sea of green, is all the parishes that have an interest in having uh, public charging points in their area. Part of our purpose was we wanted to make sure that as a valley, as an area, charging points were um, available across the area so that you'd avoid sort of that um, anxiety about there not being points to charge at. So the parish clerks identified potential places. Um, and in the case of this parish, um, our little group identified potential places. Um, the purple ones that you can see are the existing charging points in the valley. So as you can see, we hardly have any. Um, and so this is something that we really wanted to do something about. And the green is all the areas that are potential areas. So each parish was asked to come up with three potential sites, no commitments to it, but just what would work. And what's interesting is, is when you look at it, um, it actually maps quite closely onto community buildings. So it became clear that for, for many of the parishes, where they wanted the charging points was where they had village halls and so on. So we used this information to write a report. We did a full report to um, uh, Baines, just explaining what, you know, what we'd done, where we would put them, what the responses were within each one, um, and giving them data about existing uh, needs and the likelihood of usage. So uh, it's just to give you an example of how we, we have been using mapping with Google Maps. But obviously, if that sort of information, if there was a layer on this system that was appropriate places for EV charging points, Baines would be able to see that there was coverage significant and appropriate across Baines. So really our, our involvement in this is just as an interested party to the idea of a cross Baines working group to think about layers. Hope that helps. Thank you, Jackie. I think that's very helpful. Uh, John, is that an old hand or a new hand in online speak? New. New. Over to you then. Sorry, uh, I do apologise, but a very quick question. Um, we use Parish Online significantly within Freshford. The area that's open for view to us is naturally Freshford. Is it possible for the forum to have open access to a full area, i.e. multiple parishes? Yes, yes, it is. Oh, sorry, Chairman. No, that's fine. I was going to ask Martin because he was our JS manager. I assume he's had the license. Uh, but yes, Tristan, I, I guess it's just answered it, it, it for is him. possible. <laughs> it is absolutely possible. Um, and we can set up, we can also share layers. So if, if, if parishes want to work together in a in a forum, we can make we can make sure that the parish information is added to the the, the view of other parishes, so that you get a, a view across the whole of Baines or the or you know in, into whatever particular grouping you want. And also, I just want to also say that you know I'm hoping that this will lead to something that could be become a national layer. So if we can get parishes, we've got 1,700 parishes across the country now using the system. And if we could establish some of these standard layers, we could then create national layers that would allow people to see consistent information across the country. So I think there's great potential to, to stop all parishes working individually and start to work together. Fine. So that therefore would allow us to include parishes who are across a county boundary. Yes, it would. Oh, oh, sorry. Across the county boundary, that's that's As tricky. Well. Ah, well, they they would need to pay for a license. That's that's the only problem, because at the moment, you know, we've got we, you, some of your some of your um, outside the Baines area. There isn't a group license, so anybody who wanted to join in from there would need to pay their license. But it's I do want to just tell everyone it's very cheap and very cost effective. So for a small parish, it's sort of fifty pounds a year. For a large town council, it's fifteen hundred pounds a year that sort of but it's you know it's really not a significant amount of money okay thank th you thank you Tristan and thank you John uh for your question uh, just to remind people that Martin's uh, email address is in there if you want any uh, to ask any questions outside the meeting in terms of access and what the system can do following Tristan and his presentation um thank you Jackie and uh from that um is there anyone else who'd like to speak on this topic before we move on? I'm not yeah, seeing could I Sorry, could I just make one more remark? I, I just wanted to say, 
about Jackie's maps, um, which which is is great. The, any mapping is is wonderful. I, I don't sort of insist on Parish Online as the mapping tool, but we could take we could certainly take uh, Jackie your those maps you've done and embed those in Parish Online and make them available in the same way. So I think that's just a, a really good starting point. Thank you. Ricky over there. Um, thank you very much, uh, Tristan, uh, for the presentation and for the comments and questions related to it. So that was item six on the agenda. We now move to item seven on the agenda is the power share case. And I believe, uh, although I haven't been to the power share on committee meetings before, I think this is the first time that we're having one of these. Uh, so um, this evening, I believe, uh, Councillor Cathy Thomas from the Paris of Peace Line St. John will give us a presentation on some of the recent uh, activities and, uh, that the uh, Peace Line Parish Council are doing and possibly some of the history as well of the parish. So, Cathy, are you there? I am. Brilliant. So yes, over to you, yeah. and I don't know who will be sharing the screen for you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Alice, uh, oh, that's fine. So, um, just as an introduction that we talked at um, the, the meeting when we were looking at the agenda for this liaison meeting and saying there's a lot of things that happen within parishes which um, other parishes know nothing about and we thought there'd be an opportunity that um, we would be able to present something to various at uh, various meetings so um, I'm starting the, the series off. Um, so if you'd like to, well, that's our village sitting on the top of the hill. Um, if you were driving along the road between Bath and Tunley. So it's not a view of Pease Down that most people see. So I have the next slide, please. Just a little bit of background. Um, Peace Down St John actually would only became a civil parish in 1955. Uh, prior to that, it was just a scattering of houses until the sort of turn of the century when mining took off. But this is the, the shape of our parish. Um, and we extend to the Cam Valley in the north and down to the Wellow Brook in the south. Um, to have the next slide, please. So what I thought I would do is talk about improving access to our open spaces because we have um, we have a lot of open spaces, but it, it's really important that people can actually get to them and use them. So, and just slight background again: you know, eighteen hundred in eighteen hundred there were thirty homes in the area, and now we're talking about um, three thousand. Uh, have the next slide, please. So the Parish Council, since it was um, formed in 1955, has actually done quite a lot um, developed ground. The Miners Welfare Recreation Ground came as part of the parish being set up, and that would originally been um, established back in the early 1920s. The, the, the cemetery is um, one of the first developments that the new parish council had to um, do because the church was running out of space. And then we move on to sort of Beacon Field, which was part of the development from the uh, major part of the house housing development and Ekiwish Green, which are, are two areas which would be classed as public open space in planning terms. Um, so we've got a small piece of land in Carling Court. We've got allotments at Braystown. The next slide, please. So um, what we would look at now is the Miners Welfare Recreation Ground, because it sat, it sat there for many years and we haven't really made a lot of effort to make it 
open, accessible to people. There, there have been a football um, field there for a long time, uh, but it was um, had one path to a, a play area. But other than that, it was um, very inaccessible. People on mobility scooters, if you wanted to push your child across the grass, that would be fine in the summer when there was no rain, it became very boggy. So we um, decided as a parish that we would actually put a system of paths into the area. Can I have the next slide, please? So this is an example of how it would look in the winter. Um, so you can imagine it was not particularly inviting for, to walk around. We'd already um, had equality gates fitted on most of our open spaces, which was uh, funded from an empowerment um, fund. So we had access, but once inside you, couldn't actually go anywhere, but you get stuck in the mud. The next one. So this is showing um, early progress, the work that started on that particularly muddy corner. And the second slide on the right shows the path almost finished. Next slide. Um, that's looking at it from the um, other end of the um, recreation ground coming in from Whitebrook Lane, people that know the area. And that would then link up across the um, to Church Road at the far end. And it would have two forks so people could walk um, either direction. And the skate park in the background that you can see is also a development that we did a few years ago. Excellent. So that's just to show you a little bit of the miners' welfare again. That's our um, football team. Um, but some a few years ago, we actually fenced it in completely so that it, it uh, it's to stop dogs fouling. It still doesn't stop people thinking that's a good place to go and take their dogs, but um, in the main, it solves the problem. And we put in a youth shelter, which is used not just by the youth. Um, you find adults sitting in there as well. It's next to the skate park and the, the young children's play area. Next slide. If I go to the other end of the village, the cemetery, which I'd mentioned earlier, um, that was... Uh, in 1955, they started to plan that, and it was eventually opened in 58. And back in those, um, that time, what's 70 years ago almost, um, 7,000 pounds was borrowed to be able to buy the land. And then in the late 80s, we had a land exchange as part of the housing development so that they could build the bypass. This is a, the development that we've done over the years. We put in a memorial garden and there's paths all the way around. And a pergola and some just recently put some um, step stools in there. There's somewhere for people to shelter. This is um, Beacon Field, which is, was a, a large piece of land that came as part of the um, planning. We recently put in a, a dog exercise area. Um, the, a, a children's play area was put in a few years ago. One of our recent additions is a mugger, um, which has been a great success. Uh, Nakuish Green, which is uh, again, part of the 
public open space, which was developed. Um, the developers put the paths in and planted it's about a thousand trees. And it's a really delightful place. That's another um, shot of it. And also it shows the equality gates. So um, I think we've got five equality gates just onto this one piece of land. Uh, and the others are on the recreation ground and some on Beacon Field. So our people can now have access to all our open spaces. They have gates they can go through and also um, tarmacked paths throughout the village. And this is one of the older pieces of land and we've got um, a seat there. So and we've got lots of seats around the garden, around the village, which mean people can um, rest, enjoy the areas. On the allotments, we put a soil toilet, which is also a great success. The allotments are very uh, sort of a long distance from any uh, anywhere else for um, using a toilet, so that that works really well. And we also put raised beds on the allotments. So those are some of the things that we've done over the last few years. And um, in a way, when you can be say you're fortunate if you have house building, because certainly a lot of the early money came from S106 money. Um, latterly, the precept is where most of the funding is from. And we have, um, we have earmarked reserves so that you know, we don't think we need to spend a, a large amount of money next year and then have to raise it at that point that if we work over a few years to, to have the money available. The Community Empowerment Fund was really useful with the equality compliant gates because we could we actually match funds that with SIL money. Um, a lot of work in the cemetery was a resident who made some generous donations. And recently we had money from the Quartet Community Foundation um, towards the cost of a Jubilee Garden that we are in the process of completing. So, improving access to our open spaces. So I've hoped I've given you a flavour of what our open spaces are like. Um, so what have we done? We've installed seats around the village. We've put in the um, gates at the entrances. We've made the recreation ground much more accessible with the new path network. We've put a dog safe area. We're building a Jubilee Garden. And we've developed Ekiwish Green, which was the public open space. And we have spent a lot of money maintaining hedges and keeping that in good condition. Um, improved the play equipment, built a skate park. Um, done a lot of work in the cemetery and done work on the allotments. So I think that as a parish that we have worked um, quite hard at making sure our open spaces are accessible and kept in good condition. And with some of when you spend um, the situation when we decided to spend S106 money, we actually made a decision, shall we um, spend this money on lots of little projects or shall we just go for something big? And it, that was our decision. And, and different parishes may decide to do it differently, but I think it's worked really well for us 
and I think our residents are appreciative. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Cathy. I think that was a really uh, informative presentation about some of the recent work of uh, Peace Down St John Parish Council. As a councillor who represents a ward within the City of Bath, Oldfield Park, I'm always in awe of what parish councils do and how they improve uh, and, and facilitate uh, activity within their communities and from a personal point of view I think it's a great loss that we don't have a parish in Bath or parishes uh, within Bath which could equally do such amazing work for the communities uh, within the city. Uh, I think one of the things um, your presentation has highlighted to me this evening is that we really, really would like other parishes and town councils to showcase their activity so if you would like to do that I believe officers will add some information in the chat in a moment where you can put forward that you could highlight and showcase some of that information and I think that going forward you know we all need to learn from what uh, we all do well and we can replicate that and improve it and obviously we have our own unique situations in our parish and towns within North East Somerset but I think there will be a lot that we can all learn collectively going forward from the good work that you're doing so thank you very much uh, Kathy, for kicking us off. I know it's always hard going first. Uh, so thank you very much for that. And hopefully people uh, uh, will come forward with other presentations at future meetings. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, I'm just reading what the chat. Excellent. Thank you. So that was item seven on the agenda. Item eight on the agenda, we have one of our council officers Dave Dixon who is our community engagement manager and Mark Hayward who is our community engagement officer and they're going to talk about the review of the local community funding and our community infrastructure in community infrastructure levy map so over to you uh, Dave yeah thank you very much uh, and uh, good evening everybody um, when we did the last revision of the um, parish charter one of the things that uh, we agreed with you all as parishes was that we would collaborate on digital projects to improve how we work together communicate and deliver services uh, and one of those projects is this tonight which is basically a, a, ma a mapping based system that shows the locations of the bath neighborhood sill funding in within the bath bank the old bath city boundaries but it also shows the funding for the ward uh, community empowerment fund the fund that's uh, provided by the council for individual councillors and actually where some of that money is being spent so i say we delivered this um, system i uh, mark actually is going to take you through it because mark put all of this together and um, i just sort of nodded sagely at the correct moments and uh, mark if you want to explain to everybody what we're looking at yeah sure good evening everyone um thanks dave um, yeah, the, the idea behind this was to try to be um, a lot more transparent with where money was being allocated from the local sill elements um, for Bath. And uh, it was really welcomed by people that were looking at the spending. And they said it was really good to be able to see how the spread of money was was being um, you know, allocated around the city. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen there, the green dot show the levy, how it's been allocated in uh, completed projects and in approved projects. Um, there are lots of filters on this map and we will put the link up to this. It's on our website now so people can have a play, play around with it. But if you hover over any of the projects, we'll tell you, um, you know, how much was granted in the in the project, the name of the project and its status. Um, we also have an additional level, which is the Wall Council's Empowerment Fund. And this will show outside of Bath and inside of Bath, the in the purple dots there, all of the projects from last year and this year that have been funded through the Ward Councillors. So again, if we look at, if we just take a, a random dot there, it was a, a project that was from 2000 to 2001, 200 pounds that um, Hinton Blewett uh, had for some finger post repairs. And it gives you a, a rough postcode of where that was allocated. They're not always exact, but they're as close as we can get them to the projects that were given. Now, what we would like to do is offer this to parishes so that they would be able to also show 
where their community infrastructure levy is being spent locally. We could put another layer onto this map and it would do exactly the same thing. You could filter it so that, again, you just have the layers you want to look at. Um, and, you know, if, it, if you want to go into any greater detail, you can look at if you were looking at, say, Bath Haven North there, um, and you wanted to look at the Ward Councillor Fund, apply the filter, and it will bring the map up with all those projects from the last two years that are within that, um, that ward area. So we, we think that, um, you know, it would be helpful for residents to be able to see where money is being spent within the parished areas outside of Bath. So the other thing we have put together with um, our friends in our IT department is a really quick and easy way for parishes, if they want to get involved, um, to be able to submit details to us. Because for us, you know, a lot of the time when, you, when you're doing mapping, it's keeping the information up to date and relevant, which is really important. So on the screen now, there's a, a form that's been developed. And again, this can be, um, you know, adapted. That. But what we're looking there for is for people to just click, you know, I'll, I'll just do a random, a random sample. I'll, I'll click on the first ones I come to there. So I click on Bathampton and then ask oh, if there's a reference number for the project, the amount the grant was for, the postcode description. And then when you click, oh, we wanted to put something in those boxes. There we go. Um, and then ask for your name and your email address and telephone number. And then you'll be asked just to check your details before you submit. And then when you click it there, there's a declaration notice, which you just tick off. And then it tells you that you've submitted that information and it will be added to the map. And if I just open up, yeah, you, you, the, what you basically see on the screen, screen there is that you, it's what you would get in an email and you'd get a reference number back um, as soon as you submitted it. So, um, you know, it's, it's quite it's quite quite a, a visually nice system, and it, it's quite a lot of information, and allows people to have a look at how the spending is taking place across the regions. Um, I think that's all I've really got to say at the moment. So we'll share the link to you. But what we would be really interested in is to know if you feel that you would, as parishes, like to be involved in this and um, and share share your projects like Bath are doing at the moment. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I think um, I think that's that's really helpful. I mean, I'm conscious of the fact that certainly with um, with some of the parishes that that have their plans in place, where you're getting 25% of uh, developers' contributions, there's some quite significant money. And I think Kathy Thomas mentioned um, earlier on about Peace Town and some of the projects that have been funded from both the um, community, um, um, the, the councillors' empowerment fund, but also from from some SIL funding. But um, We'll put all the links and the information in there. And if anybody wants to, to uh, get involved with it, please get in touch with either either Mark or myself. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mark and Dave, uh, for giving us that information on how uh, parishes and towns can help publicise the good work that they're doing through all their different uh, activities through obviously the neighbourhood proportion of, of the SIL and uh, ward councillors funds etc so thank you. I think the details uh, some of them have already been put in there but obviously in the minutes and the follow-up from the meeting there'll be all the details and officers from the community engagement team are very happy anytime to sort of speak to parish clerks or chairs or anyone from the parishes and towns about how we can uh, utilise this new GIS system uh, better so thank you very much um, item nine on the agenda is the parish charter review and obviously the current one we have was established back in 2018 and it's time that we want to refresh it so i believe dave dixon you're going to introduce this item yes thank you chair just very 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 briefly um because i know you've been um uh, we've circulated a, a small um background information sheet the the charter needs to be uh, updated again. This is for the third time. Uh, and we are looking, hopefully, to, to try and get some people from the parishes to be involved in working with us in the working group in order to take some of that forward. Um, 
we would like some representation, which would be really helpful. I mean, I think certainly since we formally adopted the last one in 2018, there's a whole host of different things that we've been involved with and we've managed to actually bring together collaboratively things like Fix My Street, the Parish Toolkit, Improving the Asian between the councils and the parishes through us and our Connecting Communities team. We've done a whole review of the Connecting Communities forums for all of the areas across Bath and North East Somerset, which was been which, which was quite an extensive piece of work. But there are other things that we need to bring in, and I think we need to factor into the to the new revision of the parish charter that are you know that weren't factored in before, and in particular stuff around the climate emergency, obviously that the council um, instigated in two thousand and nineteen. I think it's going to be incredibly important that we try and get as much of that into our new revised parish charter as possible. So this is basically just a very quick sort of call for any parishes or individuals that are interested and would be able to support us in in delivering the next version of our parish charter brilliant uh dave thank you very much uh for the update of that and i hope some parishes will volunteer to get involved with uh the working group to assist in updating uh the charter um no one specifically wants to speak on that. We've covered item nine, unless Mandy Bishop wants to add anything to what Councillor Romero said earlier this evening about the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. No, I don't think so. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Romero covered everything. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So it only falls for me to now to say thank you very much for everyone coming uh, this evening to the meeting of uh, the Parish Liaison Committee. We have as item 10 on the agenda the future dates and the next one is due to be on the 13th of July which is a Wednesday and then the 12th of October uh, starting at 6 30 and they normally be an hour and a half uh, online but obviously if you have any feedback if you would prefer the meeting in July to be a physical one in person again uh, obviously, COVID numbers are going up currently in Bath and North East Somerset and across the country. So, you know, we've been having online meetings and, and the council meeting for council on Thursday is online because of those things. But obviously, we can review that. So if you have any views on that, please do contact the council's community engagement team for the meeting on the 13th of July. So once again, apologies from the chair that she was unable to attend uh, this evening because it would have been her last meeting. So uh, can we just uh, put our vote of thanks uh, in the minutes and note her contribution to the forum uh, this year, uh, or sorry, the liaison uh, meeting this year, uh, and wish her well from her retirement as, as chair. She'll still be obviously a councillor uh, going forward. So thank you very much for coming this evening. Um, we will obviously have the minutes and officers will follow up uh, with the information for some of the presentations uh, directly to you as members of the forum afterwards. So thank you very much and have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.